This is Senior Pastor Larry McCord, pastor of New Birth Christian Ministries Incorporated, located on Long Island, New York, reaching out to you wherever you may hear the sound of my voice, sending out the Word of God. I know many of you are troubled today, but you don't need to be afraid because you're God's property. And he said, no weapon formed against you will prosper. This is taken from Isaiah 54, verse 17. The only thing you can rely on is the word of God. Tune in and listen to New Birth Christian Ministries on YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Dr. Daisy Jewell is an award-winning worldwide best poet, an author, a speaker, an educator, a columnist, a broadcaster, a media personality, an executive producer, a former talk show host, magna cum laude honors with a graduate degree and a double PhD, a keynote speaker. She delivers magnetic, enthusiastic, and entertaining heartfelt speeches all over the world. Her audience includes teens, collegiates, adults, graduates, professionals, corporations, parents, clergy, married couples, and more. Her empowering style is inspiring, uplifting, that builds confidence, self-esteem, self-worth, and encouragement. Uh, we're fortunate we've had her before, and she was awesome. Dr. Daisy Jewell, who will talk to us about the woman with the issue of blood. Dr. Jewell, the floor is yours. So much, Dr. Reverend McCord and Dr. Sandy Webster for inviting me to speak at the Women's History Program. Hello to all the New Birth Christian Ministry members, to all of our guests, to all of my special guests that are here, to all of our friends that have joined in. I am so thankful that you are a part of it. So far, we have had a wonderful day and every speaker that has spoken all I can do is just give them an applaud. It was awesome, people. Just awesome. So without any more to do, let's bow our heads so that we, I can lead you in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we just love you. We worship you. We adore you. Father, we thank you, Father, for all that you do and all that you don't do. Lord, we thank you for our families, Father God. We thank you that we had a safe trip here for those that had to travel and a safe trip back home, Father God. Let us know. In order to know the word, we're going to have to read the word. We're going to have to activate the word in our lives, Father God, because you have given us a lot to live by. Father, I ask that you bless everyone here from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet and let everyone never be intimidated because they are victorious with you. We can do anything with you. We can do all things with Christ who strengthens us. The Lord will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And Father, we thank you for that. We love you. And we ask this in the highest name above all names, Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Today, I am going to be speaking about the woman with the issue of blood and faith. Faith is one of my favorite subjects. Pastor Sandy chose faith. I was shocked. I was thinking, how does she know that I really am connected with faith? We never discussed this. It was the Holy Spirit that told her because at first we were going to choose our subject. She chose mine and she chose perfectly. I would like to first of all, start off with the woman with the issue of blood. Now it doesn't say anything, any place where she had faith, 
but I know she had faith. And I would like to go through her story with you. The lady with the issue of blood had faith. This woman, number one, had spent all of her money going from doctor to doctor, trying to be healed. She had been hemorrhaging for 12 years and all of her money was gone. She had the opportunity to be right with the Lord at a gathering and she stood, she came to him from behind. Yes, she did. And her thought was, if I can only touch the hem of his robe, I will be healed. She activated her faith when she thought about her works because people, faith without works is dead. It's just empty noise. You have to have works when you have your faith. They work together. Just remember, faith without works doesn't work. Faith with works, you got a winner. And trusting God on top of that will take it to the next level. So Jesus turned around when she reached out and touched, not him, not even his him, some books say him, but the fringe on his robe. You know those fringes that have strings on them? She touched a fringe and the Lord felt it. He turned around looking. He wanted to know who touched me. Why? Because he could feel the power come out of his body. He knew someone had been healed. And at first she was shy. She was on the ground and she was nervous, frail, desperate. And she said, she told the Lord her story about how she happened to come there, how she happened to trust him so that she could be healed. And the Lord said to her, Jesus turned around and said to her, daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And she was healed in that moment. She did something so miraculous. First of all, she thought about what she was going to do. And then she coupled it with the faith she had inside. She said, if I could just touch the hem or the fringe on his robe, I will be healed. And she showed her faith because faith is a substance hoped for and evidence of things not seen. If you have faith and you have prayed to God, you don't need to worry about how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, or if it's going to happen. Why? Because it is God's business. Sometimes we get in his way. That is God's business to bring it about. The more encounters you have with faith, the better you're going to feel. The more faith you're going to have, we, we are rewarded by the amount of faith that we have, we are rewarded by the amount of faith that we have. This woman had spent every dime. Some people would have hesitated and they would have said, oh my goodness, but I don't have any money. How am I gonna ride a donkey back? How am I gonna get back home? I have no money. She did not worry about money. All she wanted to do was lay eyes on Jesus. She knew if she could do that and reach out and touch him, that power would go through her and heal her. She had tried everything for that past 12 years, but it only worked with the Lord Jesus Christ, which tells me that if we want to have something done, 
in the name of Jesus, we have to have faith in order to get it done. But you have to put works with it. Faith will heal you. Faith will help you forgive someone, even yourselves. Some of you have things inside you have never forgiven yourself for. So faith can cause you to forgive yourself, to forgive your neighbor. And, and another thing that many of us might not think about it, a lot of people will say, but I just don't have the faith. I don't have any faith. Wrong. You were born with a measure of faith. We all were. So you were born with it. All you need to do is to start activating it and start using it and start praying about it and say, Lord, I was born with faith. You gave me a measure of faith. You give me fresh mercies every day, Father. Please help me to learn how to activate it. And then you start walking in it, knowing that God has already answered that prayer and you will become full of faith. You will believe and you will trust and you will begin to let other people know all the wonderful things that Jesus has done for you. There was another man that went to a gathering near the lake. And his name was Jairus. Jairus was a, a member of the local synagogue. And he fell on his knees in front of Jesus' feet and wanted Jesus to come home with him. Now, what would happen if someone fell on their feet in front of you and asked you, would you please come home with me? I need you. Think about that a minute. Just think about it with the way times are and the way things are going on. No matter who it is or what it is, I'm not telling you to go, but I am telling you to trust the Holy Spirit that works within you to decide whether or not you're going to help that person. You help them as best you can, but that is your call. But someone one day might say that to you, well, he wanted Jesus to come home because he had a daughter that was 12 years old. And he was told by a messenger that came to this same function that she was dying. He said she was dying and the messenger said she was dead. So Jesus went, he took Peter, James and John with him to uh, uh, Harris's house and he walked into the house there was a crowd that was following and a crowd there and so there was a lot of noise there was a commotion there was wailing there was weeping and jesus said why all this commotion what's going on and uh, they were saying well she's dead and jesus said no she's just sleeping she's just sleeping so everybody started laughing and making remarks like they did not believe Jesus. You know, pretty much like Sarah did when he said to Sarah, you're going to have a baby at a certain age, which was not a childbearing age. The thing is, when it comes to the Lord, and even when you are seeking his help in faith, you can never say what he won't do. You know why? Because if he did it yesterday, he'll do it today. He's going to do it tomorrow and he's going to do it forever. He changes not. We do. He never changes. If he did it for someone else, he'll do it for you. So that's how I know that it will work. So anyway, getting back to the story, the Lord took them into the house. They were all in the house at that point. And the little girl appeared to be dead, but she was just sleeping. And God asked Peter, James, and John to come in the room with him along with her parents. And he took her by her hand and she was healed. She was healed. He told the father, don't go out and say anything. But of course, 
if your towel is being healed, <laughs> that's something very difficult to hold back. But he, he does say that often in the word. Don't tell anyone. Just keep it to yourself. But we serve a good God. And just like the issue with the woman with blood for 12 years of hemorrhaging, you can activate your faith. Your faith will heal you. Are you sick in your body right now? If you are, your faith will heal you. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. How would you activate that faith? You could begin to pray. You could be, write down every scripture on healing and start saying them. Put them on your refrigerator. Put them anywhere you have to in order to get your healing and stop going to people. God has the answers. Jesus has the answers. You can go to people and pray, but when you need something from the Lord, like healing, that has to come from above. That has to come from above. And the thing is, you must believe, you must trust, you must activate that faith. You must believe it. You have it. It's inside you. Like I said, you were born with the measure of it. Sometimes we forget. We have faith in us. The day we were born, it is there. Secondly, if any of you out there, maybe you have children that have strayed, prodigal son, prodigal daughters, or perhaps you have children on drugs and you're trying to get them back home, off the street and away from the people that you feel are not a good influence. You want to get them back in church. Start praying. Start activating that faith and start believing. Start by reading books. Start going to various seminars, Christian seminars that can help you. Talk to your pastor. Start your church praying. Start a prayer circle. Do whatever you have to do to get the works in, the faith in, and the prayers in. It's important. Don't ever give up on prayer. Even when people look at you, you had a husband, he's no longer there, you want him back, but everybody thinks he's not worth having back. If you believe in God, go ahead and pray about your husband, pray about your relationship. Let the Holy Spirit be the one to tell you what to do, to show you what to do. You just keep praying. That is your job, to pray, to stay humble. And vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. No matter what that person has done to you, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Don't do anything to get back at them. You just pray for them because God is going to reward you one day. And God is going to change that person. Pray for their soul. Pray for their salvation. Pray for their healing. Just keep praying. That's your job. Keep believing. That's another job. Keep having faith no matter what. Don't roll over. Don't believe people, number one, that have never walked on water, that have never built a whole world in seven days, six days, and rested on the seventh. Believe in God. Look at what he's done for us. Read the faith chapter. Do you know what the faith chapter is? It's Hebrews 11. Read that chapter. It talks about a lot of prophets and things that a lot of uh, people that you read about all the time have done in the word of faith. That's called the faith chapter. Hebrews. I spoke from Matthew 9th chapter today with the issue of blood and verses 20 to 22. So you might want to read that later, but it talks about the lady with the issue of blood. That was a very courageous woman, a very, very courageous woman. I want you to just visualize at this point every Thing you are going through now and every person here is going through something I want you to visualize it 
I want you to think about what can you do? What works can you put to it? And add your faith and, and just let God know, I believe in you. I trust in you. I know you're going to bring me out of this. I know that I can do better. And I'm, I want you to give me steps on what I can do, Father. And I will do it. And let it go. Is that hard? It's very hard. Because we always want to take control of things and do it ourselves. Let God work on your life. Let God work on those kids for you, on the forgiveness. Forgiveness is hard, but you have to do it no matter what. Sometimes we walk around, and it's been 100 years since we have spoken to Uncle George. Well, just pray about it and ask God to help you to mend that relationship, to bring those children home, to help get them off drugs, to help you and your friend one that you had for years and years help you mend your friendship there are so much there is so much you can do just never give up never roll over if god says he'll do it he'll do it he never lies he is a god that doesn't lie he has no respect of persons and what he's done yesterday he'll do today he'll do tomorrow he'll do always we leave him he never leaves us to sum everything up. But be sure to read Hebrews 11th chapter. And I know you'll be encouraged and it's going to activate your faith even more. God bless each of you. And may you have a wonderful, beautiful week. Thank you. This is Pastor Larry McCord. Thank you for attending our services here at Newburgh. We appreciate your contribution and support. Please visit us here in person as well as on Zoom. May the blessings of the Lord go with you and go in peace.